Hello, this is uh, Pastor Walter Martinez. I'm here with Brad Cutliffe. Uh, today is an exciting day. We're going to start our first podcast and we're going to live stream it. So praise God for that. Amen. Um, this, is, uh, this is a good day. So for now, we're just going to live stream this one. But after, you know, a week or two, we're going to just start doing podcasts and you can just pick them up um, on a podcast app, I suppose, and then uh, and then we'll we'll live stream some of them, but not all of them. Mm-hmm. But let's uh, let's start our discussion. I want to uh, talk about uh, 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 a, a, in view of our redemption. We just want to kind of go from almost from the beginning of the scriptures to, and I don't know if we're going to go to the end. We won't definitely get there today, but. We want to start to paint a picture of what redemption is really like and what is in redemption. Amen. Uh, how redemption uh, formulated. Uh, because when you just hear the word redemption, uh, a lot of people just look at the word redemption and they just say uh, uh, the Greek word for redemption is luthron, and it just simply means to be bought out of slavery. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's more to uh, that word than just to be bought out of slavery. So right. we're going to be discussing that so they can get a full understanding of what is actually in our redemption. Amen. So uh, so starting off early in the Old Testament, which is really the, the uh, Old Covenant, uh, the truth uh, of humanity's redemption begins to emerge through the vivid pictures and types painted through uh, the sacrificial lamb, whose blood uh, would cover the sins mm-hmm. of God's people. Now that's in the Old Testament, of course, in the New Testament, we know that that the blood of Jesus uh, washes away, Amen. cleanses, Cleanse. removes yes, right. uh, the the sins of God's people, or what we know as the sin nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, so as we move into the New Testament, we start uh, to see the scriptures. Uh, we start to see a scripture like uh, in John. Uh, 129, and then I'm going to read to you uh, verse 36. So 129, verse, uh, 129 and verse 36, I'm going to be looking at verse uh, 36, and it says, And looking unto Jesus, uh, as he, and, look, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. Now remember, we're talking about the Passover Lamb in, the, in Exodus. So for uh, John the Baptist to make this claim, that's a pretty powerful claim Amen. because he's recognizing something that took, that began in Exodus and now is being carried off throughout the years into this, into where he's at now. Mm-hmm. Jesus is walking down, uh, walking and he's seeing Jesus and then all of a sudden he just says, behold, the Lamb of God. Uh, and of course, verse 29 says, the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. So let's look at this Greek word um, upon or looking upon. It's actually one Greek word uh, and it means, uh, it, it simply, it comes from two Greek words. One is is in, which means in the center of, uh, uh, and the word uh, blepo, which means to see, to perceive. Uh, this verb uh, implies a close, uh, penetrating look, mm-hmm. in other words, to discern. Amen. Uh, so imagine John's amazement when he realized he was looking at Jesus, the true Messiah, God in the flesh, the Savior of the world. Amen. So he says, behold, <laughs> behold. Now that's, he's saying that because he's realizing something, he's perceived something, right. he's recognizing something in his heart. And it's 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 just it's uh, it's overwhelming him. He's like, whoa! Uh, and so, in amazement, uh, he says, uh, uh, "Behold," which is the Greek, which is a Greek word that means, uh, which means to see with a sense of surprise or amazement, uh, to look at, and be apprehended by. Our senses, or by our spiritual senses, mm-hmm. uh, God is so good, Amen. isn't He? How powerful uh, it must have been! 
could you just imagine being yeah. in John's time and then all of a sudden you see Jesus and as he's walking you're looking at him or you're looking upon him as the scripture mm -hmm. says and but it's a shame that that this particular verse or verses like this aren't really translated with some of these some of these uh, revelations of what the words right. are actually saying. Right. We just read them and all of a sudden we we just we look at it from a very natural lens right. and we're not comprehending what is taking place mm -hmm. in the in the heart right. of uh, of the believer. John said uh, he was looking unto Jesus. He he seen him and he just began to realize oh and in amazement. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, he began to discern, to comprehend what he was actually looking right. at. And so he, he realized this is the Messiah. This is, the Messiah. This is God in the flesh. <laughs> this is our Savior. This is the one that come here to take away the <laughs> sins of the world. And then he goes, behold. <laughs> so he's saying, look, look. Right. So he's not just saying, look at someone walking. Right. He's saying, look at what I'm... what." is being revealed here mm -hmm. just by looking at Jesus. Right. God is so good, isn't he? Uh, why don't you uh, uh, take us into the next part of this? Okay. I think Exodus 15 verses... Uh, sure. We're going to read Exodus 15 verses 11 through 13. It says, who is, unto, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, mighty ones? <clears throat> who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. Now notice what he says in verse 13. He says, thou hast redeemed. Mm -hmm. So in Exodus chapter 15, Moses and the children of Israel um, were reaccounting the events that took place during the Exodus. Uh, and everything God did to bring them deliverance, and they were doing it through a song. Right. So they're singing the song mm -hmm. of God's delivering power. <clears throat> and yeah. in this song they're saying, everything that took place th from, from the beginning of when Moses began to, when Moses appeared in Egypt, Everything that took place from that point on to now, it was you redeeming us. That's right. Amen. God is so good, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> oh, amen. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Uh, in verse 11, there are two words that I believe warrant uh, some attention. Uh, the first word is the word fearful. And the word fearful... Um, or um, found in a phrase fearful, the word fearful found in a phrase uh, fearful in praise, uh, it means to revere, to reverence. It is the concept of being fearful of displeasing. Right. And that is such a powerful word because I believe that, that in a lot of ways, uh, Christians have lost sight of being fearful. Right. Uh, everything they do, everything they, they just don't have that concept of God's presence in their lives. Mm -hmm. So they act any ways they want to. Right. Uh, and they really are not conscious of their behavior or their thoughts. They're not fearful. In other words, you know, uh, they're just not fearful right. uh, no. of displeasing right. God. Exactly. Uh, I remember a long time ago, uh, hi honey, there's my wife there. <laughs> Uh, I remember a long time ago, just looking at it reminds me of, uh, I remember a long time ago uh, when we first uh, uh, started uh, dating, uh, which was, what, 20-something years ago. <laughs> but I remember we were driving down the street, and I don't know if she remembers this or not, but at least this is the way I remember it. Right. Is we're driving down the street, you know, it was hot in the summer, and you know, when you first get started, you don't have the best cars, the best air conditions and air conditioners and stuff like that. Certainly not like we have now. Right. Uh, or at least better, better cars, better air conditioning. Amen. And uh, you know, it was in hot in summer, and there's some young girls walking down the side of the street, and they're barely dressed, 
and, and I, I could sense these eyes looking at me to see if I was going to look over there. And boy, my eyes were just straight on. I wasn't going to, wow. I didn't dare. <laughs> I used that to kind of remind me of, that's the way we should behave. Amen. That's right. If we fear God. Right. Because I didn't want her to be displeased. I didn't want her to think, that, hey, my eyes wander. Mm -hmm. right. You know, yeah. I didn't want her to think like that. Yeah. You know, because I wanted to be trusted, right? Right. And plus, I love my wife. After all these years, I still love you, honey. <laughs> uh, so that, to me, reminded me of fearful. We don't have that anymore. Yeah. To fear God, to, yeah. to fear displeasing Him, making Him unhappy. We don't realize that our thoughts, our actions, the things we say, mm -hmm. sometimes are displeasing to people around right. us, especially to God. That's right. You know, so anyways, that's my... And time spent with him will help develop that. That's right. It's time spent with the Lord. Amen. As you become in awe of, of him, as you get Amen. to spend time with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That is really good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We, so what you're saying is we just need to spend more we time. Spend more time with the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next word that I want to bring to our attention is the word wonders. Uh, Wonders are extraordinary miracles that leave a person in awe mm -hmm. of God's greatness. Amen. Uh, it's interesting that when the fear is missing, so are the wonders. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. But these, the Israelites, as, as, as difficult as they had it, because it was hard for them to comprehend what was actually going on. They were, they were full right. of murmuring and doubting and what's I have but when they when God really began to move in their lives like when God started saying take a lamb they all jumped in mm -hmm. and, and and what we need to understand is when they partook of that lamb it, it was like saying I received this lamb yes, amen. amen I received this this lamb I receive I receive it I believe that God's deliverance will come through this lamb through the blood-stained doors right uh, and that's, that's right. exactly what happened. Uh, so it yeah. didn't take them that much, but they caught on very quickly and they were delivered. And they seen wonders. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, in verse 13, he uses the word redeemed, as we talked a little bit about already. And that, that describes the deliverance. Uh, it means to describe their deliverance from Egypt or what is called the Exodus or departure out of Egypt. Right. The word redeemed here means to pay the price needed to purchase a loved one from slavery and to bring vengeance upon their captives. Amen. This is a very powerful and complex word in the Hebrew mind. Uh, and I, when I studied the word redeemed here, this is what the word redeemed entails. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just mean a price paid. Right. It means vengeance upon the captors. Yeah, that's good. Of those that, of those that were holding God's people in slavery. That's right. They paid a price for that. They paid a price for it. Uh, uh, yeah. God is so good, isn't he? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, and and really, when we stop and think about it, that's exactly what happened at the Red Sea. Right. So let's read Exodus fourteen. Sure. Um, uh, 26 to 28. 28, if you don't mind, please. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the middle of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. So we can see that the deliverance of God's people, uh, well, we know that it started with the Passover lamb. Right. But then it ended with the vengeance uh, right. uh, upon the captors that held God's people in, in slavery or in bondage. That's right. Uh, so first off, the Exodus is a picture of our redemption. So the concept of redemption through their deliverance out of Egypt found in Exodus takes on the meaning of 
being delivered, mm -hmm. set free, and carried out of slavery. Amen. And, and to rain havoc on their captors. That's right. Again, this is exactly what this is exactly what Moses did under the direction of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, however, the price paid for their deliverance was the blood of the lamb that had to be slain to mm -hmm. re and received because, of, because our captors left us tainted by sin mm -hmm. through the fallen nature. The right. placement of the blood on their doorpo doorpost was showing that the price had been paid. The price paid, now listen to this, the price paid did not go to Satan or to Pharaoh. That's right. It was a cost needed to cover the sin-stained life of God's people. Mm -hmm. And under Jesus, to completely remove the sin, uh, the sin of those that would receive Jesus as their substitutional lamb. Amen. So, redemption has two completely different sides. Uh, or you could say two completely different sides of the coin, so to speak. That's right. Uh, uh, one is to prepare the believer to stand favorably, uprightly, before God. Mm -hmm. And the other is to destroy our enemies. That's right. Those that had once held us in captivity. That's good. Amen. Amen. So we can see that Jesus went directly after the devil uh, when, when we were redeemed. That's right. You know, he rose again. Amen. Mm -hmm. He defeated Satan. That's Colossians right. tells us that. Amen. He took captivity captive. Amen. That shows that vengeance upon our captives. Amen. Right. But at the same time, redeemed us. So why, why the blood? The blood wasn't a price paid to the devil or, right. or anything that the devil had needed. The price for the blood was needed to wash the believer clean, to cleanse him, to deliver him from the uh, problems of the sin nature or the mistakes of the sin nature Amen. in order to stand before God blameless. That's it, That's it right there. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. And you can see that from Genesis through, through uh, Revelation. That's right. Uh, it's, it's really interesting concept. Uh, so, uh, again, the thing that we must take note of is that we must be willing to receive the Lamb of God as our substitute that died for the sins of humanity, thus participate with God's plan of redemption for our lives. Amen. It is interesting to note that before they could be delivered, a substitute had to be provided that would take on the punishment of their sins and that substitute had to be free from, from spot or blemish, which represents the sin nature. That's right. Uh, the sacrifice would have to die mm -hmm. in the place of all of humanity. Mm -hmm. That's right. In view of, <clears throat> in a very raw form, this is the concept of redemption. Amen. And so we need to understand that this all took place to paint a picture, shadows and types, right. of Jesus, our Redeemer, the Lamb of God, mm -hmm. the Amen. one that, John the Baptist says, Behold, oh. the Lamb of God. Amen? Amen. Uh, so let's go to some scriptures showing that. Right. Or at least uh, one. Mm -hmm. uh, in in uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Amen. Amen. So now I, uh, I'm not aware of the time. Ah, is okay. Let's go into Exodus chapter uh, okay. 12, verses 5 and 8 and then 11 and 12. Got it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So we see that the Old Testament, or the New Testament tells us, 
that we should purge out the old leaven, talking about the unleavened right. bread, uh, that we may be a whole new lump, that means Amen. without sin. Uh, as ye are unleavened, or without sin now, uh, for even Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. So we can see that Jesus is our sacrifice. That's right. He is the Lamb of God that, that John the Baptist was referring to, mm -hmm. uh, which he made very clear. Uh, they had to eat uh, the lamb and the unleavened bread in haste, mm -hmm. with their shoes on their feet and their staff in their hands. In other words, they had to be ready and willing to flee from captivity. That's good. Amen. Amen. Boy, if we understood that, whenever we come to Jesus or whenever we, uh, well, the whole concept of being born again is that you repent. That's right. Amen. And you and but we add this concept to it: be ready to flee from that lifestyle. That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh, um, did you read verse twelve? Or I did not. Okay, go ahead. Verse twelve says, "For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord." Wow. The question arises, so what is in our redemption? Mm -hmm. And why is redemption so important? Because of sin. That's right. Or the human nature has consequences. That's, That's right. why redemption is so important. Mm -hmm. Because of sin or the human nature, mm -hmm. it, it has consequences. It opens the door to the destroyer. That's right. And we need to understand that. Uh, it just has it. Mm -hmm. uh, so even though we're washed, we're washed, we're cleansed, so that we don't participate right. in the same behavior that the, that our old nature was engaged in. Right. Now, in other words, you've received power right. over that nature, so that you it no longer reigns in your life. Amen. You're no longer a slave yeah. to the old sin nature, That's right. the one that Jesus died for to <coughs> set you free from, Amen. to put you in the presence of God, right. so that you can stand before God upright, holy, amen, amen justified, sanctified, mm -hmm. amen, redeemed, glory be to God. Amen. Uh, God is so good, isn't amen. he? Uh, and so we must also look, we must also ask the question, um, what happened before and after Exodus 15, and what, and what promises were made and kept? Mm -hmm. So let's read a few more verses. If you don't mind. We're going to read Exodus 12, 23 through 24 and verses 35 and 36. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood on the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Verse 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. <laughs> Read Psalms 105, 37. Psalms it's at 105. the Amplified Classic, Amen. I believe. Amen. He brought forth Israel... He brought Israel forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let me inject some thoughts here. Yes. You've just seen just some of what is in redemption. Mm -hmm. Because That's right. Moses and the children of Israel in their song said that everything that happened in that space of time from the, from the time that the lamb was slain to the time that they were taken out of Israel or out of Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, they sang this song that they proclaimed that was their redemption. Right. All these things was a part of their redemption. But now we're looking at what was specifically in those events. Mm -hmm. Well, they were set free from, from their captives. That's right. Their captives were destroyed behind them. Right. But not only that, before they left, they uh, took their 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 silver, their gold, mm -hmm. their prosperity. Uh, That's right. That it was, it was given to them. That's right. They, the scripture says they found favor. So, like, can you just see their captives or captors saying, here, take the money and go. <laughs> right, right. Amen. And on top of that, that's like some 
two to three million people mm -hmm. that, that, that are being enriched by the Egyptians, which were their captors. Right. Take the money and go. But on top of that, not one person out of two or three million people had any type of illness, sickness, right. or disease. That's right. No weakness at all. So we see in the movies, I think someone was saying to me, sometimes when you see the movies, you see people in crutches and stuff, trying right. to go in. Right. Uh, I, I, I can't yeah. remember who was saying that to me. But you know, that wasn't really what was taking place. That's right. Because there was not one feeble person among them. That's right. So they walked out. They walked out. They took their stuff with them, but they walked out healthy. Amen. Amen. Healthy, whole and That's in your redemption. That's right. Amen. That's you can right. expect that if you are redeemed, mm -hmm. Christ has redeemed us That's from right. the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isn't Amen. God good? Amen. That's as good. it is written, curses everyone hangeth on the tree. Well, it's talking about that lamb, but under a different light. Right. A different picture is being painted there. That's right. God is so good, isn't That's he? That's right. Amen. So we can expect to be prosperous. Absolutely. In redemption. That's right. We can expect to be healthy and to be whole. Right. That is the promise. That's right. Now, why aren't people more uh, enriched right. or prosperous? Uh, and why aren't people, uh, why do sometimes people uh, struggle uh, being healed or healing is delayed. Right. Well, we have an enemy. That's right. And uh, if you stop and think about it, when 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 uh, just looking at what happened in, in Egypt, mm -hmm. as soon as God's people started to leave Egypt, mm -hmm. Pharaoh went, went after, after them. them. <laughs> See, so sin will come after you, and right. that temptation to look back, to go back, right. is, is something that plagued them throughout their whole time in in the wilderness. That's right. And so uh, that temptation. Is, and, and giving into that temptation is what caused them so much problem. That's true. You are not redeemed from obeying God. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's good. You're just redeemed from the ill effects of sin right. and disobedience. Right. Amen. That's right. So that is That's powerful. an injection. There. Amen. <laughs> God is so good. Let's read in it some more scriptures. Sure. Exodus 14, verses 21 through 24. It says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea <coughs> excuse me, dry land, and the waters were divided. Now, see, now notice, notice what uh, Moses did mm -hmm. under the direction of the Lord. That's right. Now, I, I bring that up because notice what you can do right. under the direction of the Lord. That's right. You want direction? Read his word. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's right. Just obey His word. That, if you want to know God, you cannot know Him without knowing His word. That's right. You cannot know God unless you've been introduced to Him through His word. Amen. That's right. Because if you, you, you know, you just some people go, "Well, I'm spiritual." Well, I don't know what in the world you're talking about. Because if you don't know the God of the Bible, right. you can't be spiritual. Right. Not in the sense that you're trying to say you are. Right, exactly. I mean, you might know the devil. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but you don't know God if you don't know the scriptures. Right. Amen. <laughs> I know that might not be too popular, but it's too late I said it's it. True. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> anyways. Uh, yet, we also know that the, that the Egyptians were a type of our captors, the sin nature, that at one time held God's people captive. By these verses, we can see that sin will chase after the believer mm -hmm. to try to recapture That's him. That's right. God is so good. Now, uh, let's uh, end here, okay. and hopefully we can do this again, Brad. Yes. And we'll Absolutely. pick up uh, where we, we left off, if we can remember. Uh, I'm sure someone will be able to. God bless all of you. For those of you that joined us on, on, on live stream, God bless you and thank you for being a part of what we're doing here. And uh, we will uh, announce at a later time when we're going to start doing these podcasts. We mm -hmm. want to do them on a regular basis and give you a set time so that you know when they're coming out. Amen. You can listen to these uh, podcasts on, 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 uh, in your car. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives it give you another avenue to listen to the Word of God and yes. be enriched by God's Word. God Amen. bless you. We love you. May you prosper. May you be healthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.